I would say good afternoon, but I should probably say good evening. So good evening, everyone. My name is Sandy McDonald, and I'm the director of the Office of Economic and Small Business Development here in Broward County. And I want to welcome you to our new venture, Entrepreneurship Program. And again, I'll say again, I think staff will correct me, but I think this is our sixth new venture program. And I'm going to be brief. I'm just really going to give you an overview of myself, our office, Broward County. And in short, um, Broward County is interested in working with startups. Broward County is interested in working with entrepreneurs. And tonight you're going to hear from some of our partners, some of our leads, some of our staff who's going to tell you, who's going to share with you exactly what you can get out of participating in our new venture course. But we also want to caution you. There's a lot of folks and a lot of ideas about what it is to be an entrepreneur. We are at the portion of our overall Kaufman program. This new venture is about that person, it's about that business who's truly ready to understand how to dot the I's across the T's, know the entire process to prepare them to launch their business or their endeavor. Or someone who might be taking a few steps backwards who may have already gotten going, but they realize they really need to now put organization in order, including a business plan to what they're trying to do. And what we're looking for as a county with our partners, we're trying to find some of those creative, some of those exciting, but mostly some of those sustainable business ideas that we can aid individuals to bringing their dream to fruition. We also want to make sure that you understand that there's other Kaufman activity that we provide. Have day workshops, one-on-one -on -one consultation to make sure that if you're not ready for this, you can use those other resources, those other assets that we have to prepare you to still launch your business, to understand how to start a business, to make sure that you can get the most out of being an entrepreneur. But if you think you're ready, that's why we're talking to you tonight. We want to give you all the devil in the detail the good, the bad, and the ugly, the true commitment is going to take to allow us to aid you in making your dream a reality. Next slide. So again, the Office of Economic Small Business Program you need to know about based on the goods, materials, or services the county buy, there's an ordinance that says at least 25% of what we buy, we have to buy from certified small businesses. So if you do not know about our small business program, get in touch with us. We promote business growth and job creation. It's a good thing that a business is allowed, uh, is able to launch and to create opportunity to be an economic impact to our community. But it's also a good thing when a business is allowed to scale up and grow because that business needs, then needs additional employees. And then that's the workforce development side of what we try to do. And here we are tonight, we educate aspiring entrepreneurs and business owners. We wanna make sure that you got the tips, the tools, the access to capital, want to make sure that you got uh, all the necessary resources to not just start a business. So let's get that mindset right. This is not about starting a business. This is about creating the opportunity for a business to sustain. So I see you and your product, good and material 10 years from now. Yes, in order to see you 10 years from now, you got to start. So we're going to help you with that. But we don't want folks to be excited about starting a business. We want folks to be excited about sustaining a business, growing a business, and creating an opportunity for them, themselves, their family, and others through their business. We, uh, as an office, we are a service agency. We work with all the other county agencies to assure that the goals and the vision that the county commission has for us, that we are able to make sure it happens and utilizing the support of our small businesses. So learn more about us at Broward.org slash econdev. That's our website. And if you ever need, even outside the entrepreneurial side, just reach out to myself, one of our small business specialists, one of our outreach specialists, and we'll be here for you to aid you in any way we can with you and your next and your business. Next slide. So what I want to talk about now briefly as I introduce these two speakers is that Broward has multiple partners. And we're always adding to our partnerships. And sometimes we add to our partnerships, partners that we already had that was providing a quality service to Broward, but then we realize that service can be expanded. 
And that's what's happening with the Allen B. LeVan NSU Broward Center of Innovation. And I'm not going to share much about it, um, but it's exciting to me. And I'm serious, no fluff, it's exciting to me. But instead of me, we got to have two wonderful presenters tonight. I got Teresa and I got Patricia, and they're going to come to you in their own way and tell you what Nova Southeastern University is doing in alignment with Broward County. That's really for the entrepreneurs that we're talking to tonight, as well as the future entrepreneurs and the existing startup businesses here in Broward County. So ladies, thank you for joining us. And I'm not sure which one of you are going first, but take it over. Thank you so much. Thank, uh, you. thank you for having us and good evening, everybody. Uh, so like Sandy, Michael said, my name is Terry Grandel and I'm the Assistant Executive Director of Administration and Operations for the Levan Center. And with me is my colleague, Patricia. Um, thank you, Terry. Hello, everyone. And thank you again, um, Sandy, for inviting us to, to speak to the group today. We're really excited to be participating in this important discussion. Um, um, to have for everyone, my name is Patricia Young, and, and I'm the Assistant Executive Director for Program and Membership Design here at the, the Center. If we can move on to our slides, please. So this is our, our contact info, uh, just as an FYI, we did include it in the chat, um, all the different ways you can reach out to us. Um, next slide, please. So we, before we begin the actual center, what you're seeing on your screen is a map of the South Florida region. And the reason we wanted to show this is, is really to put the perspective, um, all these white boxes that you're seeing here are uh, different technology companies that already exist in South Florida. So there's a lot of conversations right now, a lot of hype talking about Miami and South Florida becoming a tech hub. The reality is there's already, already a lot of activity happening. Um, so that's the purpose of this slide. And, and we want to paint the picture of what South Florida is. So next slide, please. Some fun facts for you. Um, South Florida is known as the most startup activity in the United States. And although that's great to know, we are 36 out of 40 when it comes to scaling. And we did conduct some research uh, around the South Florida area and trying to find out what are the main reasons companies are not scaling to the next level. And the same answer came up, there are two main answers that came up across. And one of them was the lack of access to capital. So that's one of the things we're working on as, as a center and the lack of access to qualified skilled talent, something else that we are working on. And we'll get into those details in a second. Uh, but again, fun facts, when we are talking about the tech hub and, and the technology, um, efforts that are happening here, there are over 80,000 information and communication technology workers already here and continuing to grow. And the other piece is the fact that East South Florida, some people in other sides of the country tend to think of it as a very great retirement zone, but the reality is 50% of the population is under 40. So a lot of opportunity here, a lot of potential to make sure that we do become um, that innovative entrepreneurial technology hub that everybody wants us to be. Um, and then of course, the fact that we're an international launching point. South Florida is the gateway for Latin America, South America, and the rest of the world. Next slide, please. So uh, this is a great snapshot of everything that the center is. We are, we, because of our Broward County partnership, which we're very grateful for, we're very much focused in the targeted industries. The list that you see here are Broward County's targeted industries. Um, and a lot of the efforts that we're doing prioritize in these areas, but I can guarantee that almost any company can fit into one of these categories. So there's a lot of sub um, categories here. Uh, the center has three themes, which are innovation, technology, and entrepreneurship, and four pillars, which are ideate, incubate, accelerate, and post-accelerate. And I'll pass it shortly to Patricia, so she'll go into details about what all of that means. Um, but the biggest thing here is the, the, our outcomes. Everything we do is in order to create breakthrough ideation, the development of new technologies, a talent skills pipeline, like I mentioned, new job development creation, comp company formation, and the scaling of early stage and young companies. And the other uh, fun thing that we're doing is creating a community think tank. So for individuals in the Northeast, it is very common uh, to see various type of think tanks. And But here in South Florida, there aren't any or not very many. So we'll be creating that. Next slide, please. 
So this is very busy and I'm sure it's slightly overwhelming, but that is on purpose. <laughs> this is a layout of our center and the different colors represent the different types of activities that will be happening here. So just as an FYI, the center is currently under construction. It is expected to be completed for summer. So we will have a, a, our opening, our physical opening in the summer uh, in just a few months. Uh, in the meantime, we have launched a series of virtual events. So we invite you to check those out. They are on our YouTube channel and we just had one this morning we have another one coming up in a couple weeks. Um, but as far as the physical space, um, uh, the, the red area that you see there is our event space. So if we could actually go to the next slide, please. The, the look and feel that we have throughout the center and what you're gonna be seeing here are our renderings as we move through the space virtually. Um, we do have a lot of circular um, design throughout and that's on purpose because when it comes to innovation and entrepreneurship it's just a continual cycle that you should always be innovating as an entrepreneur. Next slide please. So one of the other areas that we're going to have is our co-working space and what you're seeing here is what is the main co-working space area. So we are going to have various memberships where individuals whether they're founders, entrepreneurs um, are going to be able to access uh, from community desk, reserve desk, and so forth. Uh, next slide, please. We also have reserved offices where not only our founders are going through our programs or other founders, but corporate partners who want to have a presence will, will be here as well. Next slide, please. We, um, so another area, another thing that we purposely did is in our design is create these collision stations, if you will. So there's a lot of areas where people can collaborate, sit together, start a conversation and Innovate. Next slide. And again, more of our co-working space. One more. Next slide, please. And I, of course, there is no co-working space without meeting rooms and huddle rooms. So this, what you're seeing are, are meeting rooms. Next slide, please. Our, our huddle rooms. Um, huddle rooms are specifically designed with the stadium seating and they're, again, of creation for brainstorming, ideation, and um, huddling. Next slide. Socialization is really big when it comes to innovation and entrepreneurship. So there are, as you can see, areas, areas again, where people can sit and chat and talk and connect and bring back their, um, their experiences. But we also will have an executive catering kitchen and uh, a grab and go cafe. Next slide, please. The grab and go cafe is a completely contactless, humanless cafe. And it will have coffee, a general snacks, other drinks. We'll have a community table um, where people can come and gather as well. Next slide, please. And then event space. So events, not only will we be hosting our own events, but some of our third party, as long as they are around innovation, technology, and entrepreneurship. Next slide, please. The event space, one of the great things about it is that we have, we invested in these Skyfold technology walls. So the space is rather large, but it can be divided into three separate spaces. And it's also the area where we'll have our, our programming um, will be, well, let me say that backwards. It's the space where primarily all of our programming will be housed. Uh, so we'll have events like the ones you're seeing here, what, you know, more networking type of events, but then we'll also have conferences and speaker series and things like that. Next slide, please. Well, throughout the space, we, we intentionally created quiet spaces where people can work quietly. So it's not always about networking and running into people and talking. Uh, this here, what you're seeing is a quiet lounge. And then just on the right, you see a phone booth. We have about six of those spread throughout the center. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is one of the few uh, purposely built pitch rooms. Uh, when you are ready to pitch to investors, this is where you would be. You have, next slide please, a video wall that will be um, where you're presenting all your information and staring out into a room full of investors in the stadium seating. Um, so we're very excited about this particular space, but not only because it's for pitching, but also used for speaker series and the likes. Next slide please. Some of the unique aspects about the center, besides everything else I just mentioned, is the fact that we have a purposely built cybersecurity room where we will be training the full spectrum of cybersecurity, so not just entry-level, mid, pro, but taking it a step further and training in specific industries. Uh, the room will also be used in collaboration with local, state, national government, uh, and industry to create security operation centers and used for other types of cybersecurity events. Next slide, please. 
we'll have a technology focused makerspace. So again, not your wood and metal cutting more around your app and software development. And I would even say hyper-focused and emerging tech. So the type of equipment we're looking to have here is more around your infrared cameras, your 3D scanners, your various headsets, robots with different applications, such as humanoid robots, manufacturing robots, and so forth. And of course, your 3D printers for those that need to create a quick prototype. Next slide, please. We also have a green, uh, uh, excuse me, a media studio room with green screen capability. Again, tying it back to the creation of a digital world, but also being used for interviews, podcasts, webcasts, uh, videos for products and so forth. Next slide, please. And on this note, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to Patricia, who's gonna talk to you a little bit about our programs. Thank you, Terry. Um, so as I explained earlier, my role here is really focused on the program and membership side. So really creating the framework and the core program under the four pillars that Terry explained earlier. And I'll just reiterate them again. So it's ideate, incubate, um, accelerate, and post-accelerate. And essentially, it's really supporting what we're calling here the founder's journey. So really looking at that full, true entrepreneurship um, cycle. Um, next slide, please. So as you can see on this slide, um, we're really providing modules that really address the common needs for the entrepreneurship ecosystem. That's all the way from accelerated design thinking, all the way to company formation, raising your first round of funding or raising even your further round of funding, all the way to um, identifying skill talent, um, perfecting your pitch, IPO, and even global expansion. Um, our modules and programming, we make it quite flexible. So when an entrepreneur kind of comes through the door, or they don't necessarily will have to start at the ID8 stage and work their way through to post accelerate. They'll go through an application process as well as um, our uh, selection committee and whatever makes sense for that startup or wherever they are in that startup growth, that's where they'll be able to participate. And on the other side as well, if a founder or an entrepreneur is just not ready to commit that amount of time, they'll be able to participate in various workshops or other digital content that we have. In addition to this, we're also looking at technical certification courses. So really understanding what the skill gaps are within that space and seeing how our certification courses can fulfill those gaps. So really kind of having those conversations with some of the large corporations in addition to the entrepreneurs as well to see where the technical st stack gap is. <laughs> um, next slide, please. Um, content will be um, delivered through a master class. Uh, I should have mentioned this earlier. So we're really looking at a unique model where there'll be a master class session. So we'll have subject matter experts that will come in and kind of share their war stories, um, even experienced entrepreneurs that will share best practices. And then we'll allow our entrepreneurs then to engage in what we're calling an open innovation. So really take advantage of some of the labs and other spaces that Terry explained. So really assisting that startup as they get the education piece to be able to continue to rapid prototype. As we kind of had the conversations and met with entrepreneurs and founders and, and stakeholders here in the community, we found that really we had to create what we're calling a true wraparound service model. So as an entrepreneur is kind of going through that process, we continue that relationship, whether it's having access to legal services, self-care management. We know that sometimes founders kind of forget themselves that they're, as they're building their, their company and they're really the core um, of that startup. So offering some of those courses all the way to marketing services and networking as well. Um, our pillars will range between four to 16 weeks. Um, there is an application process and a selection committee similar to the program that we're discussing here today. Um, we're keeping our cohort quite small. So we are having five to six uh, teams. So it's two co-founders per teams and really kind of creating a safe space for our entrepreneurs to be able to kind of share their problem and challenge and they have a core group to kind of work through that process with here at the center. Um. The program um, application process, all of that information is um, provided on our website. So we've also dropped that in the chat. Um, in addition to other events and uh, modules as well that we'll be offering through our virtual platform, as Terry mentioned. Um, next slide, please. So as I explained, um, we will be offering various um, technical certification courses, and these are just um, some of the areas that we're going to be working within. So I will encourage everyone to kind of take a look at our website and see when these um, executive workshops or just technical certification courses or, are coming up. Next slide, please.
Okay, so this is pretty much a video um, just of other information. Oh, the sound isn't coming. Uh, I can walk you through it. So the various executive workshops and other um, certification courses, as well as when our first cohort will be going live, all of that information will be on our social media channel, as well as our website. So we're really excited to be here today to just um, really highlight another resource that's available to the start startup ecosystem here in Broward County. So thank you. So thank you, Patricia, and thank you, Terry. And now you guys know why I'm actually excited. And again, we have multiple partners, quality partners that are already here in Broward providing a service. And this is just going to add to it. And again, NSU had already been a partner, but this is just another extension of what the partnership has to offer. And we are going to be doing quite a bit together. We're not making any promises, but we're working towards maybe the second round of our new venture for this year at the end of the year could also be held in this actual facility. We know we're gonna to wanna to get some of our half day workshops there, but we want to begin to challenge our entrepreneurs and our startups in the areas that you just saw identified to begin to be those critical thinkers. And yes, let's take your ideas to the next level. So no matter which program you're going through, mine, Urban League, Broward College, the whole idea is that we do have what could be considered a one-stop shop with wraparound services. So based on where you are in your journey, you could potentially get some additional assistance to take it all the way to the goal line. So again, I want to thank Terry and thank Patricia for joining us and sharing that information yes. as we begin to move on. So uh, this next gentleman, I'm going to try hard not to say a lot about him, but I met Mr. Greenberg one, two, three, three, maybe four years ago now. And talking about being impressed with someone's, not their past, not their history, but where they are right now, but it's because of where he is right now that you can even appreciate his past. And we've had him at our last Broward and Beyond Business Conference to actually speak, to actually facilitate a session where we gave him the time he really needed to tell his story, but more importantly, to get entrepreneurs and small businesses excited about that which they can do. We're gonna to continue to keep him engaged and involved because he's not only so much, uh, he's not only a wealth of knowledge, but he's one of those individuals who truly believes, not even being from here, who truly believes in South Florida, believes in Broward County, and believe there's ways that we can continue to help entrepreneurs and especially our young adults grow and become everything they wanna be relevant to their entrepreneurial aspirations. So David, I want to thank you for joining us again this year and the floor is yours, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, first and foremost, thank you for that amazing, amazing, amazing introduction. You know, I'm gonna to try to explain something to everybody that's on this. We've got a great group, uh, well over a hundred people, this is terrific. And, uh, you know, we're making most of the virtual world. And just to give you a small shot about my background and why I'm so excited about what Broward County is doing and, and, and I'm so excited to help, is that I was a trader on the floor of the oil exchange where the world's energy markets, you know, grew. And we, I was there when, you know, I got on the board when it was an $800 million company and we grew it over the years and took it public for about $12.5 billion. And the, the, the IPO is great, but it was the journey that was so good, you know, and watching the exchange grow from really just something that was kind of known in the New York Wall Street area to a worldwide brand. And, you know, now we're at a very, very interesting time in entrepreneurship, you know, because the entrepreneurship means a lot of different things. Some, you know, people use it just because it sounds cool. Those are the people that are going to make it. But the people that are willing to work hard, show up put the time in, and I'm not one of these, you gotta put 24 hours a day and blah, blah, all that other stuff. When we talk, I'm just gonna tell you like it is. I mean, Sandy will tell you, I am originally from New York, but I gotta tell you, Sandy, I put a jacket on when it was 65 degrees here, you know, a few weeks ago. So I am, a, I am now a full Floridian, okay? So there's no question about that. So, but I want you guys, and I'm gonna go in and out of some of these, you know, classes, and, and now that it's virtual, it's so easy. And I'll give you some information on how to get to me online as well. But it's an exciting time, not an entrepreneur, not only in entrepreneurship, but in Broward County. And you know, I'm all in with Broward simply because I see their growth potential in tech and in everything else that they're doing in entrepreneurship 
growing just like the exchange group. And, you know, Broward County is going to be the place in South Florida. I mean, everybody hears about Miami, Miami, West Palm. I know that there are companies that are looking to come into Broward. I'm starting up, you know, a new company. We're going to end up moving to Broward. It's uh, one of the largest funds in the world that we're working with. So there's all this great stuff happening. And at your fingertips, you have this new, what, what will be this new innovation center at your fingertips, which is, you know, I took a tour of the facility before it was put together, but wow. I mean, what an exciting time to be in Broward. It's going to be state of the art. Everything is going to be brand new. You're going to have instant communication with people. You know, it's, this is exciting. So I want everybody to know that there's ways to follow me. This is not a plug. I just want to be able to talk to people on Instagram. If you guys have Instagram and I'll get Sandy my information too. It's under David Douglas Greenberg. So that's Instagram. It's David Douglas Greenberg. And believe it or not, I, you know, we have these, um, and we, that, Sandy, we're going to need to set one up, believe it or not, on Clubhouse, which is actually working really well for some entrepreneurial groups. And I have some great people to bring into the room to teach everybody on startups all the way up. And my handle on, uh, on Clubhouse is at Greenberg Cap. So it's at G-R-E-E-N-B-E-R-G Cap. And, you know, I'm working with some of the largest people on there and we have some exciting things to do. But more importantly, I've really found, I mean, I was laughing at it at first, okay? And then all of a sudden, you know, I realized you get into the right room or we make a room for Broward County entrepreneurs where we meet a certain night every week. It'll allow everybody to talk and also give ideas and I'll bring special people into the room. You know, I've got top people from California, from New York. I've got, you know, athletes, restaurateurs, uh, Wall Street guys. So there's so many different ways now that we can get to each other. And we're going to have a great time doing it. I'm going to be on call. Sandy and, you know, I love Sandy and, and his group. It's a great. They, they are totally dedicated to this. And we had a great time last year. And I still contact. I spoke to the woman that won last year. And she's doing, you know, amazing. So buckle up, you know, you know tight, you know, hold on, hold on to that steep steering wheel because it's going to be a white knuckle ride. But we're, when you, when I talk, I'm going to give it like it is. I'm not going to make this all rosy and sunshine and, you know, you go into somebody's places and it's a rah-rah session. I am not a rah-rah kind of guy. I am just a, you know, it's like I talk like, you know, Gary Vandercheck's a partner of mine at the restaurant. He's very rah-rah. And then I've got other people like David Meltzer, who's very spiritual. They're both great, but I'm the guy that was just going to talk to you and tell it like it is. And, you know, we're going to tell you what's good. I'm going to tell you what's bad. But if I tell you what's bad, do not take it as an insult because it's never an insult. It's about growth. It's about creation. And I only want to see that your best interest is at heart. And I am honored and really, truly honored to be able to do this for Sandy and his team and Steve and Broward County and Bertha and Monica and, you know, all the commissioners. Uh, so thank you very much. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but, you know, please feel free to fo follow me on those things. And I actually do get back to people. You know, it's not, a, you know, something that I really enjoy doing. And there's nothing more important than mentorship. And also, I want, for the last thing I only want to tell you, last two things. One, for the 103 people that are on here, one, everybody can be a mentor to somebody. Okay, that's, that goes without saying. You know, don't ever think you can. And when I, and when I lecture... Somebody once said to me, what's the number? How do you know you're a success? Where does that, what's the magic number? And I go, one. And, and they're like, what do you mean one? I'm like, one. I said, the magic number is one. If you can make a difference in someone else's life, you're a success. Don't compete with anybody. Enjoy the process. It doesn't matter what kind of car you drive or what clothes you wear or what kind of house you live in. That doesn't mean anything about happiness and entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is a state of mind. And we'll also talk about how, you, even if you're not doing your own business exclusively, how you can be an entrepreneur within someone else's business and learn so much for when you're ready to go out on the next step. So I wish everybody good luck. I look forward to this whole process. As you've learned very quickly, I don't shut up. So get used to that. And I'm an open book. So Sandy, thank you very much, Steve, uh, the whole group. And it is an honor and pleasure to be part of this. Thanks, David, and thanks for joining us again this year. And what David said, everything he said was true, but one of the parts that I want you to make sure that you heard him, he's not going to be the parent that's going to coddle you. He is going to tell it like it is. David was also on the back end of the last uh, new venture, one of our judges. So think about it. No collusion, no conspiracy. You got a chance to talk to someone 
that during the session is going to really tell you what it's about. But you also got someone on the back end who knows he even told you what it's really about. So when it's time for the pitch, you're going to be graded just like you know, because he knows you know. The point is, we want you to take advantage of all of the presenters, all of the information, the access to our office and to access to Steve and his staff. And Steve is now our ED manager. Steve's going to come and tell you, this is really Steve's baby. The whole idea about Kaufman and where we are as a county and how we rolled this out. Dr. Tinsley is the one responsible for that. He had actually launched it uh, about a year or so before I got here. But he's the one who's really going to make sure that you are aware of what the opportunity is that we're presenting, what the challenge is that can be your opportunity that we're presenting. But he also wants you to know he does more than just this new venture. There are other opportunities that at the end of the day, if this isn't for you, we still want you engaged in our program and in our activities and with our partners because we want to help your dreams come true. But we want to challenge you to take the opportunity to participate in this process and to bring your dream to fruition. So Dr. Tinsley, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Sandy. And uh, a special thanks to, uh, to David, to Patricia and Terry, to all of our speakers that have uh, been with us so far this evening. I hope that you're beginning to get a sense for the quality of partnership in support of entrepreneurship that exists in Broward County, because that's part of what we're trying to communicate to you uh, tonight. Um, Broward County has grown and since you know, 2013, when we initially launched this program, um, we have really seen um, partners that have worked together, linked together, grown their offerings and really developed the kind of ecosystem uh, where entrepreneurs can flourish. And that was what we had in mind back in 2013 uh, when we launched this program. Um, one of the things that, you know, the way this program sort of got off uh, at a start was that we saw a real need to have some real formalized training around business plan development. And we recognized the Kauffman Foundation, uh, the Ewing Marion Kauffman Foundation as a global leader in entrepreneurship, in entrepreneur curricula, and entrepreneur training, and we knew we needed to be affiliated with a strong uh, curriculum partner that could help us deliver the kind of classroom, uh, quality classroom training that our entrepreneurs need in order to, as Sandy said uh, a few minutes ago, not just start a business, but be in a position to sustain it. Uh, next slide, please. And so we embarked on this partnership, this, this uh, affiliation with the uh, Kauffman Foundation, Kauffman Fast Track, um, we'll talk a little bit now. Uh, I'll spend a little time giving you sort of an overview of Kaufman and sort of an overview of our program. We'll move on uh, to our uh, special project coordinator senior, uh, Daryl Rosenbaum, who will talk to you in more with some more specifics regarding the class, and then I'll come back uh, in a little bit and talk with you about the uh, application process. Next slide, please. So a little bit about Kaufman, as I mentioned, global leader. One of, the, one of the most renowned uh, entrepreneur development foundations uh, in the country. Um, they are at a million entrepreneurs and growing worldwide in terms of the number of, of entrepreneurs that have been helped through the fast track programming. Um, and you know, when you look at a million folks across the globe entering into some curriculum with Kaufman and you see a number like 46% uh, of those folks started a business, that should give you some comfort. It certainly gave us some in terms of looking at a curriculum that actually leads to businesses getting started and being sustained. The whole point of this program is for you to get into business and stay there. And one of the things that we're gonna be driving for uh, is to make sure, and this is gonna be a very competitive application process, which we'll talk about in a minute, but we wanna make sure that we've got good strong ideas, entrepreneurs who are in it for the long haul. And you also gotta understand that even if this, this particular course may not be the course for you or for your time constraints right now. We've got a number of partners and resources. We work directly with entrepreneurs every day. So there are a number of things that we do with Kaufman and side by side with the Kaufman program to help promote entrepreneurship. So even if this doesn't turn out to be as you get into it and understand what some of the requirements are, even if you decide, well, maybe not the right time, that doesn't mean that you still shouldn't be working with us in getting yourself prepared um, to launch that business idea. Next slide, please. So since 2013, we've been an affiliate. We started out filling a gap. 
We looked at the ecosystem here in Broward County and we determined that there were gaps in our entrepreneur ecosystem. I mentioned that we were looking for a really um, structured program to help folks develop a business plan. Uh, this program and curriculum hit the bullseye. Um, we launched it as a proof of concept and here we are now uh, in 2021, still going strong, growing each year, looking for ways to expand our capacity to do more and developing stronger partnerships uh, the whole time. And one of our big partners, as we talked about earlier, uh, coming on board, we always had a partnership with the Nova Southeastern University uh, family. Uh, now with the development of the Innovation Center, there is going to be seamless synergies between us where we can promote entrepreneurship. And again, build out this ecosystem to make this not just a place to start a business. We have no problem getting them started, make it a place where your business can grow and thrive. Since 2013, we've done over 67 half day workshops. So is a 12, 13 uh, session um, uh, new venture course over the course of a couple of months. If that's not really uh, your sweet spot right now, we offer throughout the year half day workshops to sort of get you thinking about what would be uh, next steps in getting that business launched. Um, over that time in 67 uh, half day workshops, uh, we've had over 500 entrepreneurs go through these workshops. There are two of them. One is the intentional entrepreneur, and that's really designed to talk about what it takes to get a business started, what it really takes, because it takes a lot more than just a good idea. And so we explore some of the things that entrepreneurs need to do, need to be willing to do, and need to be willing to sacrifice in order to actually launch a business. And so the goal of the intentional entrepreneur is to eradicate accidental entrepreneurs. So we, you know, we're not encouraging folks to sort of back into becoming an entrepreneur, back into starting a business because it's kind of something you were doing on the side. And hey, let me make, I'm gonna to try to make a go at it as a business. Nope, you need to stop before you start thinking about launching a business and consider what it really takes to be an entrepreneur, what it really takes to launch that business. And the Intentional Entrepreneur Half Day Workshop is designed to help you think through that. Now, Sandy also mentioned that we've got some, uh, you know, this program appeals to uh, early stage businesses as well, folks who have kind of gotten into business and might be at a crossroads about whether or not to make that commitment to take their business to the next level. That's what our listening to your business half day workshop is all about. Let's start looking at some indicators within your business. Let's start determining opportunities for growth. Let's start looking at what it's going to take in order for your business to grow. Is now the time to expand or is now the time to make some other decisions about what to do next? within a business that you may have recently started. So we've got workshops designed depending on where you are within your entrepreneurial journey. And the idea is that what we have a vested interest in is not just getting businesses started, but having successful businesses in Broward County. The cost to our economy of a business starting and failing is much greater than investing this kind of resource on the front end and giving you a greater chance to be successful over the long term. So this is a commitment that our county commission has made to make sure that we're not just, you know, talking to folks about what it takes to start a business, but we're putting specific plans and roadmaps in place to start a business successfully. Next slide, please. So new venture. New venture is sort of the, the, the central piece of our fast track program. We, as Sandy mentioned, are now um, about to launch our sixth new venture uh, it's really more, now it's gonna be more of a 13 session a fully virtual um, class since 2016. We've done five of them. We've had over 70 uh, entrepreneurs go through the Fast Track New Venture program since 2016. Our most recent class, we had 17 participants and 14 of them completed a business plan. Now, when you think about the idea that um, we've got uh, over 70 folks to participate in our program so far, all the way since 2016. We've had 44 of those folks complete a business plan. And then out of that 44, 31 participants are currently operating a business in Broward County. Now I mentioned to you a while ago that there have been something like a million uh, entrepreneurs who've been helped by Kaufman Fast Track globally. And they're at about a 46% starting a business percentage, right? So about 46% of them have actually lost a business. When you get inside of our numbers, we are looking at over 50% of our participants who complete a business plan by going through this class, over 50%.
And then the vast majority of those are folks who are operating businesses now. And that is what we're trying to do. So, you know, there is a certain level of academic exercise to writing a business plan. Our, what we are doing, what we're focusing on is strong business ideas, strong business plans that lead to high percentages of folks that complete a business plan actually getting into business in Broward and staying there. So again, I mentioned this is a very competitive process. And in order for us to produce the kind of numbers you see, over 50% completing a business plan, well over 50% of those folks actually in business, it's very competitive. These are very strong business uh, plans, very strong entrepreneurs, and those are the folks that we're looking for to participate in our program. So, um, and so how do we do it? How do we kind of create some of those numbers? Um, I think at this point, we're uh, going to transition into Daryl Perez Rosenbaum, our special project coordinator senior, and he's going to talk a little bit about what actually happens within the class, what you can kind of look for, what you can look to get out of it. Some of the things that we do um, to generate these kinds of, uh, these kinds of numbers. Um, next slide, Vanetta, but I think it might be, I think it might be Daryl. Yeah. So, so, good, so good evening and happy St. Patrick's Day. My name is Daryl Perez Rosenbaum, and I also work for the Office of Economic and Small Business Development. Next slide, please. So one of the things that I'm gonna be going over is the overview of the fast track. So one of the things that you're gonna be building is your entrepreneurial skills. You're gonna learn from market research to distribution channels. You're also gonna be researching and developing your business concept. We're also gonna be looking at your master business plan step-by-step, -step, and we're gonna be looking at proof of concept and looking and analyzing and checking at different points of time, your uh, checkpoints on how your business is, is going to operate. Next slide, please. So what will I accomplish by the end of Fast Track Venture? You're going to determine the viability of your business, con uh, your business concept, how strong your business plan is to connect to services, and you're also going to com complete a business plan and oral presentation in a competition. Next slide, please. So what you see here is our sessions that we're going to be having one through 12. And what you see in ID8 model is the entrepreneurial lifestyle. But what really we're doing is getting from concept to implementation. And we're really going to be getting from market research to launch to how to get your business to the marketplace. Next slide, please. So what you see here are individuals that attended the 2019 class and the biggest thing that I kind of want to focus here on is the relationships that you're developing as an entrepreneur in, 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 in this ecosystem is the relationship that's going to continue well beyond the class being done. So I'm going to tell you a little story. The gentleman that's looking uh, in front of you, his name is Mr. Jimenez. His business was blockchain management. The one in the middle is Mr. Gazda who was working on pet, uh, creating pet water or Gatorade water for, for pets. And the gentleman in the pink is Mr. Avery, who had a janitorial service. So you can see the diversity of businesses that we have. But the story that I want to kind of tell you about is that Mr. Jimenez also helped out another um, student, with, which in the class had a nonprofit organization that, that this student named Mr. Carney was basically helping, well, was doing his business was helping nonprofit, uh, helping homeless individuals and veterans to a transitioning um, transitional facility. Mr. Jimenez donated a car to Mr. Carney just to just to, to just help him facilitate his business. Next slide, please. And then again, in this slide, I'm gonna give you some more uh, ideas of what kind of businesses that came, came in. The first woman that you see there had a nonprofit uh, organization for female. The second woman in the middle was doing plant uh, plant based restaurant business. And the next person next to her that has the rock shirt on is an individual that was starting a barbecue company. The individual in the back that's wearing the purple and the black was Mr. Carney. He was the one that Mr. Jimenez actually gave a vehicle to help his business out so that he could pick up uh, veterans for his transitional home. Next, next slide, please. And again, what you see here is how engaged the class is and how they're really paying attention to the speaker that has been speaking above it. 
Next slide, please. So what you're going to get out of the class is that you're going to get an online entrepreneurial manual. All classes are going to be virtual. There are going to be 12 evening sessions. You're also going to be have access to the Kaufman online toolkit and resource. But again, the biggest thing is you're going to have access to the growing local community of entrepreneurs that's going to happen and you'll have access to well beyond the class. We're also going to have a graduation day, oral presentation, and everyone that attends will have a certificate of completion. Next slide, please. So how these sessions are going to be formatted, again, like I said, all classes will be Zoom. We're going to have an entrepreneurial exchange, meaning that you will be called upon, you will be asked what have you done for your business every week, what activities are you doing toward getting your business you're also going to be talking about the uh, materials that we have on the classroom. We're going to have subject matter experts on each topic over the 12 sessions. We're also going to have a point where we can network and break and also talk to those subject matter experts. And sometimes after the question and answer, some people schedule appointments with these subject matter experts to help them develop their business. Next slide, please. So just to kind of give you the class schedule of what's going to happen is that April 7th is going to be the first class and it's going to run all the way through July 28th. We're going to have a business plan, competition, and graduation day. All classes or all sessions are going to run from 6 to 8 o'clock. And again, all classes are virtual via Zoom. And next slide, next slide please. And I'm going to be passing it over to Steve. All right, thank you. Thank you, uh, Daryl. Um, get myself out of the chat room. Um, yeah, so I wanted to, at this point, kind of share a couple of uh, one of the questions that we see uh, in the uh, in the Q and A area. You know, what kinds of businesses are you looking for? Do these businesses uh, have to be for profit? Can they be nonprofit? Um, are you focusing on certain types of, of businesses? So let's talk a little bit about you know who should probably apply to this program. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So this program is open to aspiring entrepreneurs and early stage uh, businesses. And when we say early stage, we're really talking about zero to a maximum of about three years of age. Once you get beyond that, there is another curriculum within the Fast Track program. We are not currently offering it, but it's called Growth Venture, but it's, it's a curriculum designed for that next stage. What we focus on right here is getting off to a strong start with a strong foundation. Uh, this is, as I mentioned, an all virtual class. Every session is online via Zoom. So you need to make sure that you have the, um, you need to make sure that you have the uh, computer capability, the software, the internet access, um, the ability to navigate some of these online platforms. All of the course materials are also online. So you'll have to be able to get those, uh, get access to those online. So one of the key uh, features is that this is no longer the sort of brick and mortar um, pad and pencil class that it has been in years past. It is all virtual. So you have to kind of think about making sure that uh, that's something that you have the capacity uh, to do. Um, we will talk about um, your time commitment. Going to class on Wednesdays, and the classes are principally on Wednesday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m., that's only the beginning. Every single class, you will leave there with a lot of research and work to do. And because this is, as, because we continue to move through these concepts, you really have to keep up or else you'll find yourself toward the end of the class um, really behind on your research, really behind on your uh, on your um, building blocks to get your business plan written. And the goal of this whole process is to finish this course with a business plan. So there's a real focus on making sure from week to week, from module to module, that we're doing that work. Um, I am available. Daryl is available. We have resources and um, subject matter experts who will be assisting you, who will be presenting during these sessions to give you a real insider's view on some of these business concepts, but it's gonna be up to you. And you've gotta really make the commitment um, over the course of each week to cover, uh, to, you know, to make sure that the assignments are being covered and that the work product is there. Um, when you apply, we are really looking for one solid business idea. And the reason for that 
is because again, you know, this is not this course is not for the the faint hearted, and it's and you know the world is full of great ideas, right? Full of great ideas. What we're looking for is a great idea that's accompanied by the experience, the market research, and again, we're not talking about a full blown market study, but you've got to demonstrate that you put some work into understanding what the market is for your business idea. You have to have some practical experience in it. Um, you know, a lot of folks tend to pitch us ideas for business, but they have no real experience in that industry. That makes it tough for you to be successful. And so it's important that you really think through the things that you know well, the markets that you know well, and the industries that you know well. And then you need to, you really got to, you know, filter that down to one business idea, because when you apply, you'll apply with that idea. And that's the idea we'll be working with from week to week as we go through the course. There is no way that you can um, succeed in this class. There is no way you can um, successfully finish your business plan if you don't attend the classes each week. Uh, it factors into scoring. Um, at the end of the course, we will have uh, a business plan competition that is open to all the attendees of the course for the last, ever since 2016. The Board of County Commissioners has made a financial commitment to provide seed money grants to participants in this program. The winners of the business plan, first, second, and third place, we will continue that commitment. And so you have little chance of competing for that prize at the end of the, at the, end of the course if you're not attending each week and working your way through the concepts every week. Uh, next uh, slide, please. So how are you scoring? How are you deciding? You're going to end up with about 15 to 17 folks in this class, Steve. There are over 100, right, in this meeting right now. So how do you get down to 15? Well, some of the things that we're going to be doing is really evaluating how strong and how well-developed your business idea is. Again, when we talk about strength, have you assessed your target market? Do you have experience in this, in this industry? Um, does, it, does your uh, proposed model for making this successful make sense? Is, are there examples in the marketplace of what you're trying to do? All of those kinds of things will factor into our evaluation of your business idea. What kind of experience you have in the industry? If you've been driving, if you've been working for, you know, uh, Broward County Transit for the last 30 years and, and you know everything there is to know about the transportation business and you want to start a restaurant now. Well, you're going to have to really do a real strong idea and you're gonna to have to do a real strong demonstration of how it is that you have the industry background. I wanna start developing software applications. That's also great, but you'll have to demonstrate where that experience is and where that knowledge base is to launch that kind of business when your work experience indicates that you've been spending most of your time in a different industry. So you have to, you know, you really have to think about, you know, where is my experience? Um, how well do you know your target market? Who's gonna buy your product? Uh, you'd be amazed at the number of folks who, when we talk one-on-one -on -one and we ask them, okay, so tell me about your customers. Who's, who's going to be buying your product? Oh, everybody. It'll appeal to everybody. Everybody's going to love my product. Never true. That is never, ever, ever true. So what you need to know is exactly who your target market is. You know, I, I'm sure that if you walk into any successful retailer, any successful uh, um, quick service restaurant, any successful, they can tell you down to the income level, down to the age range, what their target customer looks like. That's something you should start thinking about too. And anytime you start with this product will appeal to everybody, you've already kind of got off on the wrong foot. So you really need to be thinking about who else is buying this kind of product? Where am I gonna target this? You have to demonstrate an understanding of the marketplace. And then you have to demonstrate to us that you've done something to launch. So th there's more than just having a good idea. What kind of research have you done? You know, um, have you invested in any training to become better equipped, better familiar with the product or the service or the market or the industry? What have you actually done to move towards a launch? You know, have you invested in, in software development? Have you invested in, you know, marketing materials? Have you bought market studies? What have you done? to move you closer to a launch and increase your knowledge base. And again, give you a better chance uh, to be successful once the business starts. Next, uh, next slide, please. Okay. So 
uh, as I mentioned, um, all of these factors we will ask you in the application and we'll ask you to elaborate on them. Um, one business concept, we'll expect that business concept to move all the way through. I know a lot of entrepreneurs have an idea a minute and that's great, but you gotta focus yourself on one business idea and drive that through our process. I wanna again reiterate that this is going to be a very competitive process. This is a process where we'll whittle down and our expectation, you know, is again, we have over hundred people on the line here and we usually have as many who are planning to or considering applying. So it's gonna be a very competitive process. I think there have been years when we have uh, selected 15 participants out of more than hundred applications. Um, I think the last time around, it may have been 60, 70 uh, applications. You have to uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that, Daryl, but it's very, and we expect those numbers to be much higher because this is the first year that we've ever done the entire course online as a virtual learning environment. We'll still keep the numbers low because we wanna give you that um, individualized assistance as you go through the course. We don't wanna have so many folks that we're overwhelmed and unable to give you the responsive assistance you're gonna need as the process moves forward. So, you know, as we, as we get through this, it's going to be a very competitive process, but we're not leaving you in the lurch, right? We still do one-on-one -on -one counseling here in our office. We still have a staff here to help you work through a business plan idea. We still have partners, some of whom you've heard from today, who are available to help in developing a business idea. We have other partners um, from, from the SBDC to uh, the Small Business Development Center to SCORE and other partners. There are a lot of partners, including ourselves, that can work with you even if you don't go through Fast Track. So, you know, it is not the end-all, be-all. The only opportunity you'll have for assistance with us is through this program. We do it all day. It's our day job, uh, as Sandy would say. So this is what we do every day. Um, so even if you decide that it's not for you, uh, keep in mind that we're still here for you. And we're still here to work with you and work through uh, all of your um, through all of your uh, early stage uh, steps. Next slide, please. A couple of dates you should be aware of. The application opens today. Uh, you'll get a little more information on that as we uh, finish up here tonight, but it's important just to know that uh, the application uh, will open today and it will close on March 26th. And that'll be it. Um, and because we have to move rapidly through um, to get uh, our um, selected entrepreneurs notified and to get ready to get started in April. So we will notify those that have been accepted. We'll notify everybody. So you'll hear from all of us. You've either been accepted or we have some alternatives, again, as I mentioned, uh, to help you keep moving your business along. Um, and, uh, and then the, the, business, the, the course itself starts on April 7th. And again, most of these courses are uh, on Wednesday nights, two hours per night. And we'll go from April through with a couple of breaks in between around holidays, but we'll, uh, we'll go through uh, and finish up uh, in July. Uh, so a real commitment, real commitment. And we're looking forward to having you uh, go through our process. And we're looking forward to pulling out the best 15, 17 strong business ideas, strong entrepreneurs ready to make the time commitment that have the uh, capability to do what we're doing online. Um, and we're really looking forward to this being the strongest, best class ever. And we've had some strong classes. So this class will have its, uh, its work cut out for. Uh, next slide, please. So there are websites. Um, you'll be able to, to find our web, uh, our application on our website at Broward.org slash econdev. I'm not sure if it's released just yet, but that is where you will find it when it is released tonight. Uh, and we have additional, um, we have additional uh, information on the Fast Track program at FastTrack.org. Uh, we are an affiliate there. Uh, next, uh, next slide, please. Oh, wow, okay. So there you go. So I'm gonna take that to mean that we're open. We're open for application. So everybody don't jump off and go apply just yet, but uh, we'll give you an opportunity to do that and do it uh, as soon as you can. Um, next slide, please. And that's that's me at the top and Daryl uh, beneath. That's our contact information. I'm sure we're going to make the slideshow available either online or to individuals. 
Um, but of course, you can reach us if, if not at one of those numbers directly at 954-357-6400, and they will get you to us. Um, so we're, we're really excited, as, as, as we've been saying all night, this is really growing, and we are bound and determined to make Broward County uh, an entrepreneurial hotspot with not just a great environment to start a business, but a great environment to grow your business. So we're looking forward to working with you to make your business ideas come uh, true, because when you do that, you build our economy and that helps us do our job. And so um, we have a vested interest in your success. Consider Broward County your first real partner in your business idea. Uh, and consider the Board of County Commissioners who have already stepped up and committed seed grant dollars uh, to our participants, to the winners of our uh, business plan competition. Consider them sort of your first uh, silent partners in, uh, in uh, your business idea uh, because they are actually making a financial commitment to help you be successful. Because in doing that, you help our economy. Um, so that is, uh, that is all I uh, have. Uh, I think at this point, uh, I am throwing you back to Sandy. Um, yes, yeah, Steve. Um, we've, I've answered most of the questions as they were going. But okay. we, we did get a question. Um, Vanetta or someone let my camera come back. We did get a question uh, that a gentleman had about pivoting. So let me say this because it does tie in to one of the statements you just made. So the gentleman had a business or has a business that was impacted due to COVID. And I'm sorry, gentlemen or the madam, I'm not sure I missed that. The person had a business that they had going and due to COVID, they either stopped the business or they're considering the pivot. And they were asking us if they considered the pivot from the beginning to the launch, is this the type of program? My answer is yes. Mm -hmm. If your business was four or five, six years old and you had some COVID interruption and you're really just going to get that going again, the answer would be no. But since you said you had a business that had that COVID interruption and you stated that you're looking to do something different and you want to start that, that's what this is about. Now, as Stephen just told you, from the application perspective, I don't know how much you've thought about this idea in the past. I don't know how much or how familiar you really are with all of the inner workings of this idea. That's what you're going to need to be able to show us in the application so that we don't think it was an idea 18 minutes ago that you just threw on the paper where there's no substance, there's no connection, there's no conviction, there's no buy-in to your idea that we can see, read, and feel so we can help you take it to launch. But if there's something that you're looking at doing that you've given some serious thought to, you got some ideas and concepts around it, you have some familiarity with it, and you're gonna be comfortable putting it on paper to be reviewed, to be considered one of the 15 to 17, by all means, put it on paper. The other thing I wanted to come back and just reemphasize that Stephen said, now, this is going to be more challenging. I know you think it's, better, it's a better opportunity, but this is going to be more challenging now that it's virtual. See, we were able to be open and honest when you had to leave your house every week, come to our location. That means tell your spouse or your significant other, you got to watch the kids, you got to feed the kids. On this Wednesday every week, I have to pack up and go be about my business to start my business from six to eight. And I still had to come home and tell my spouse or significant other and my kids, I love you, but I still got to find 15 to 20 hours outside of the classroom to keep working on this dream that I have that's going to help me and my entire family. See, that was the commitment you had to make when you had to come to a physical location with us. Folks, I'm telling you, that commitment is now even more than where you are right now. Your car, your house, or you stay at your office when the courses are going to be in the evening virtual. You're still going to need to be able to commit that six to eight on Wednesday. Yeah. You still got to make sure somebody's feeding the kids. You still got to make sure your spouse or significant other is okay. You need six to eight on those Wednesdays to focus on the material 
and the information that's now being passed along cyberspace. And yes, even though you did the course at home, you still got to carve out 15 to 20 hours to do your homework and your research. So we thought before COVID, the program was hard and you had to make a commitment and you needed to tell your family about this commitment and about what you're looking to do. I'm here to say it's going to be even harder because you're at home. And what might be considered those family loving, nurturing distractions are going to be there. So we're going to be looking for folks past the application process who still have the capacity to make that commitment so that we can do the best we can to help your dream of starting a business or continuing a business or launching this idea come true. So we need you to think about that. Now, that's not something we're actually going to read in your application, which is why I want to say it now. The application is one thing. It's your job like business. You're getting ready to tell me a story in order to sell me on your story. And hopefully we're going to read it and be just as excited as you were when you're writing it. That's what the application is about. But once you're selected, we then got a hope. The county got a hope. All the rest of the taxpayers in the county got a hope. That the <laughs> investment we're getting ready to make into you, you're just as committed for this 12, 13 week period. The investment we're going to make into you you're committed for the coursework and for the homework and the research mm -hmm. because we want to be committed to you to not helping you start a business, but putting you in a position to start a business that will be sustainable. So that's my emphasis on this evening. You got the rest of the dates. Um, all of that information will be on our website first thing in the morning. You already have the link. And we can probably go back to that page where you can see the link for the application tonight or tomorrow. But again, all of that will be on our website. We just want to make sure that you are aware we are as serious about this as we know you are. You have actually taken your time on this day, this evening, to join us, to hear information so that you can begin to make a decision about you and your business and your future opportunity. And we want to be there to help make that come true. And the last thing I'll say, uh, in addition to what Steve mentioned, even if this isn't for you, or maybe the timing's not right, you need to still reach out to us for the half-day workshops, the one-on-one -on -one consult, or get the list of the other resource entrepreneurial partners right in Broward who we even lean on. Because there's something for everyone. And as you also heard as we started off tonight, there's going to be even more for everyone when NSU and Innovation Hub is up and running. So we just want to make sure you recognize that it is going to be competitive. We're excited about you being here tonight. We're going to be excited about immediately reading these applications once they come in. And if selected, we're hoping we're identifying those who can make that real commitment because as Steve alluded to, it's a beautiful thing having 17 and 14 complete. But I'm waiting on that 17 when all 17 complete. All 17 uh, finishes the business plan. When all 17, I can look up three years later and they're all still in business. That's what we're trying to get to. Yep, we are absolutely chasing that. We are chasing that 17 in, 17 out, three years down the road, 17 still in business. Um, saying I did want to also mention that uh, the application link is going to be emailed to all the participants following uh, our presentation. So Tiana wanted me to make sure that I mentioned that. So if you're having trouble finding it or you're having some difficulty, um, that link is going to be emailed to all the participants tonight. Okay, so let's shoot through some of these questions. Uh, and two of them are similar uh, from Ms. Bradbury and from Marlene. Is there a specific range of industries? Example, I'm a beauty salon. So hear what we said earlier. We recognize, we're Broward County, and in case you didn't know, you're going to be a part of it. There's over 74,000 businesses in Broward. As a county, we 1,300 square miles, 31 cities, 1.9 million residents, but over 74,000 businesses. As the Economic Development Office, Steve's the Economic Development Manager, hear us. Every single business that generates revenue or and or provides a service that cares for lives, that creates opportunities are important to us. So again, if the 
beauty salon and or the barber shop and or the uh, supply store has all the pecking orders, dotted I's, cross T's that can be put into an application, we want it. We're not saying one industry is better than another. We certainly are looking for those who can uh, have solution pro solution solving ideas. We're certainly looking for those who can align themselves with technology and apps. We're certainly looking for those who at the end of the day are gonna be able to scale up and that company of three is gonna end up being a company of 30. All of it's of interest to us, but because it's an entrepreneurship program, we want to accept any of the industries that can demonstrate from the owner's perspective or the applicant's perspective that they got what it takes and they got enough information, they can demonstrate their interest, they have enough and or they're informed enough that they can submit a quality application. So again, we are not discounting any industry. And for another person who asked earlier, that's inclusive of nonprofits. Absolutely, absolutely. We're looking for all, again, the, the final ju the judgment we're making is not on the business uh, industry, it's on the strength of the idea, the commitment of the entrepreneur. What have you done to put this business plan in motion, to put this business in motion? How well do you know your um, industry and how well do you know your market? Those are the, the, the decision points we will use as we're going through these applications to school. Will there be another cycle if we're not able to commit to this round? We are looking at trying to do two this year. Yes, we are. We are looking to try to do two Kaufmans this year. And if we do the second one, it'll be somewhere later in the fall, uh, bordering on uh, the winter month. I'm from Michigan. I say winter, I'm thinking of cold. I'm going to say winter here and it's still going to be 72 degrees. Um, so yeah, we're really focusing on trying to do a, uh, a, a second cycle of the Kaufman this year. So I see Vanetta or the team has put the customer satisfaction survey up. So please folks, Feel that out because we do this after every workshop because we want to know how we're doing, what else can we do better, and get some information and some feedback. Um, but that's extremely important to us so that we can make sure that we're doing the best for you guys. And as you fill out that survey, uh, we'll check to see if there's any more questions that we need to answer out loud for everyone. Well, Steve, you already mentioned it. They said, when will the application be available? And I think you said tomorrow or the following day. Yeah, actually, the application, we're going to email out that uh, that link tonight. So it's going to go live tonight. That's right. And Steve mentioned to so everybody that's on this, that link is going to be mailed out. Rob, you got a good question. Rob, you have an excellent question. Are there restrictions on what the 10K can be used for? Steve's going to share that with you. And it's worth sharing on the front end. Thank you, Rob. Because, again, folks, we don't want to be misleading. You know, yep. this, this ain't Shark Tank at the end of the day. You know, and this ain't that other game where you come on down and we wrote your check either. I'm government and I'm spending your money. And again, we had to make sure that it was of use to you. No need of having a program and the money ain't no use to you. But there is things that we got to do that make sure that it's readily and accessible and available. So, Steve, talk about exactly how we do with the money uh, per the, uh, um, the pitch. Yes. So you will receive, you will enter into a grant agreement with the county. And as part of that grant agreement, you will submit. There are two ways in which the grant can be paid out. We do make grant advances, but they have to be bona fide business-related expenses. So what we're going to be looking for is the kind of expenses to get the software in line that you need, to work with a marketing consultant, to develop a marketing plan. You may have some other uh, software upgrades. If you're an e-commerce site, you may need some programming. It has to be business specific. So, so no, you can't take, you know, the $10,000 and, you know, buy a car, uh, unless, of course, it is an integral part of your business plan. And we haven't really seen a lot of that. But what we're really looking to do is use those funds. And remember, these are public funds. At the end of the day, the Board of County Commissioners has made a commitment to use taxpayer dollars to support your business. So in order to do that, we're supporting business-related uh, expenses. So there are restrictions. And when I say restrictions, what I really mean is it has to be a bona fide business-related expense. And they can be unique. You just have to explain that to us. All expenditures have to be approved by our office before any checks will be uh, either submitted to you as an advance or submitted to you as a, a reimbursement. But yes, they do have to be business-related expenses. 
Thanks, Steve. So for Ari, and I, pro and I apologize if I'm saying that wrong, and for Tracy, here's the first decision you have to make. Steve mentioned this. He didn't allude to it. He mentioned it. Entrepreneurs, and this is serious, especially serial entrepreneurs, you really do have an idea per hour. You do. Some got it every 15 minutes. You have to make a decision. We want one application from every applicant. And if you got two of the best ideas, hearing all that you've heard, going back to our website tonight and tomorrow, reading all that you're going to read, pick one that you think you can tell that story in order to sell that opportunity where you can be selected. Do not submit two. Please don't combine two. This is that first business decision. Pick one. And that's the good thing about it. Because again, as an entrepreneur, you also own the idea. That is not that one idea is better than the other. It's like cooking. You know one pot's ready before the other. You want to give us the pot that's ready. You want to give us the meal that you know is ready. Other one might, not, not, might need to simmer a little bit. That ain't the one you want to give me. You want to give the one that you know is ready that's going to knock off most of those uh, criteria and those thought points when one of our reviewers is reading it so that they'll see that this person has his or her thoughts together to move this forward. So that's our recommendation. Send us one. Do not by any means combine two. And yes, if you're that creative because you've got things on the burner, you got to pick one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's see. Okay. It looks like Rob has a question here regarding where, you know, uh, whether or not uh, contracting uh, is restricted to uh, businesses that are located in the United States uh, with respect to coding uh, or other software. Uh, and it is not. What we are interested in is making sure that should you, should you be awarded grant dollars, that all of those expenditures are for legitimate business practices, for legitimate business expenses. So if you need website design or an e-commerce site development and you found that assistance offshore, we don't uh, offshore, we don't really have an issue with where you located the services. Our issue is just making sure that it is germane and really tied to your business operation, a really necessary business expenditure. And so, since we're in the days and the age of CARES grants federal fund, COVID dollars on the business side, uh, EIDL, PPP one and two and forgiveness. The other part of that answer is folks, it is government money, might not be federal, it's local government. You go have to have real backup documentation for what is this lengthy, which is a good thing, list of eligible uses of the funds, but it's gonna have to be verified. It's going to have to be validated. So let's just be clear and honest. And that's not challenging anyone on this call. We just got through saying this for the last four to five months with PPP and EIDL and even the county's program. Because it's government's money, there's going to be extra effort in dotting the I and crossing the T. So just know that if you're in the pitch competition and if you're fortunate enough to win, please understand the rules have already been written. They've been given to you before you get started. At the end of the day, you really don't need to ask me anything when it's time to use it because you're going to know exactly what you can use it for. And you know we're going to need legitimate backup for that. So that should be your, uh, your mindset that if I'm fortunate enough to get to that level, I want to identify those things that I can validate that I can give verification that they occurred and they were eligible. And the dollars, we want to make sure we disseminate them timely. So we're here for you in that regard, but we don't want no one to get this uh, uh, miffed. We are government at the end of the day. Absolutely. Um, Steve, there was another good one that I saw that we want to try to answer. We only got a few more minutes. Um, I'm going to try to think of some too. What were some of the pitch winners? their business, their industries? Huh. Well, we, you know, we've had a number of them over the years. We've actually had 15 winners uh, so far. We've had, um, we've had environmental services companies that have won. We had a GIS mapping company uh, that won. We had a, um, a health uh, yeah. developer uh, that won, um, that came out of some health 
problems that the entrepreneur themselves had. They developed an app to monitor uh, their uh, caloric intake and other uh, issues related to maintaining their health. Um, we've had uh, service providers uh, who've won as well. So we've had, we actually had a, uh, um, in this last go around, we had a consulting firm that won and that focused on assisting in, in identifying scholarships for, uh, for graduating uh, seniors. So we've had a, a real variety of winners. And again, it always comes down to the strength of the idea and how well constructed those ideas are. Uh, Daryl mentioned earlier that one of our winners uh, developed a formulated uh, water for pets that's designed almost to be like a Gatorade for your pet. Something that's more portable that you can take on long trips that'll keep your pet as opposed to just a bottle of water. So we've got, I mean, really across the spectrum in terms of the kind of business ideas that we've had. So we're looking for the strongest and the best and you never know what that's gonna be. So there isn't necessarily a sweet spot. Oh, it's always tech, it's always software, it's always this or that. Um, but what we're really looking for is how well developed that idea is and how well do you know your market? Again, we're focused on success. Our, we're focused on businesses that are gonna leave our class and be successful over the long term. So, and, and so don't, you know, and, and so we don't want folks pitching us ideas because they think that may be more attractive to us than something else. We want you to pick what you're good at what you're passionate about, what you have knowledge of, you know, what you have knowledge in, and make the case for why you can successfully bring this idea to market. That's what we're looking for. Steve, what do we say uh, this go around about other competitions? Can someone be in our competition if they're in other competitions? That we have several competitions and several entrepreneurship programs going on around the county. Right. So the way our application is scored, if you are participating in another, we will ask that question. Um, and we also obviously we, we belong to Broward County's um, Alliance of Entrepreneur Resource Organizations. So we meet regularly with our other partners that provide programming. So we always check with them, you know, um, and we share information with respect to, you know, participants, etc. Because there, we do focus on folks who are not you know, kind of shot, you know, going from one competition to the next, to the next. You can't maximize your point total if, uh, if you are participating in another. It doesn't preclude you from applying, but you can't maximize your application score by being involved in some of the other business plan and pitch competitions around uh, our area. So you're not, you're still eligible to apply, but I can tell you that competitively, it makes you a little less competitive because again, remember all of these programs are generally funded with some level of either foundation or uh, donations, or in our case, taxpayer funded. So we, so, you know, entrepreneurs bouncing from, you know, one program to the next program to the next program is really not encouraged. And there is a, there is a point, uh, there is an issue with scoring um, that'll make you less competitive if you've been doing that. But again, that doesn't mean that we can't work with you. It just means that for these 15 to 17 slots, we're really trying to, you know, we're really trying to be focused on the 15 to 17 folks that, that we want. So you can apply, but I can tell you, again, because we are always trading notes with our partners, we kind of have a sense for who's participating in what programs, and it could be a, it could be a little bit of a challenge um, to get your maximum score if you've been in other competitions. What if someone else is pitching your idea? We say to this, we don't know what people are pitching and you don't either. That's why we're looking for someone who can pitch the idea via the application and they can spell it out the best. If we run across two other ones and they're all great, we might have three of them. We run across two other ones and they really don't have the kind of intensity and the depth that we need, we're gonna end up with one of them. So again, you shouldn't fear that somebody else might be pitching what you're pitching as an, as an applicant, you should be focused on, can I tell this story the best based on where I am and what I've done and what I'm aware of and what I'm trying to do? This actually, though we keep saying it's competitive, the competition starts with yourself. Can you put on paper that fabulous idea that's in your head that you can share that story with a reviewer that they're going to be able to see that sale and recommend you. That's what you're looking to do. You know, in spite of what anyone else is pitching, 
you're trying to put into that application why you and your idea need the assistance from this program. Well, folks, we're going to have to leave it there. So again, please check our website. Vanetta, if you can go back and put the website up or our Steve's and Daryl's contact back up. Um, hopefully you all had a chance to complete our survey. Um, if you have any questions outside of the application, please use Steve and Daryl's information to send those to us because we don't want to leave no one hanging. We want to try to make sure you're crystal clear as you go into this process. And we're certainly going to make sure this presentation is available so folks would know some of those finer points. You would know those dates again. Uh, you ain't have to remember them or write them down. Um, but the first thing to focus on is you making a determination that you can make this commitment. And if you decide you can make this commitment, the second thing to focus on, can I put this idea on paper? Not on paper, but on paper in a manner that a reviewer is going to see and feel and actually hear my idea and how I've organized it and laid out the commitment I've made and the commitment I'm willing to make for them to consider me as one of their 15 to 17. That's what you want to do after you decide, if it's you and your family or it's just you, after you decide that you can make this 12 week commitment of two hours a week on a Wednesday, an additional 15 to 20 in that same week for research and homework to be successful at the end of the day. And this costs you absolutely nothing but your time. So with that, again, I want to thank uh, my staff from Vanetta to Ms. McCall to Steve to Daryl and Ms. Feliciano, our assistant director, was on the call earlier. I want to thank our presenters uh, who started us off today. Uh, I'm from Nova Southeastern University and that innovation hub, which we are crazy about going forward. And also Mr. Greenberg, who joined us, who always joins us. And for you, again, is 90 of you still here or roughly at least 82, because there's only eight, eight of us as staff. So that's at least 82 who hung out through the full duration. The top number was 105, but that included everybody, including the presenters. So I still have at least 82 who showed enough commitment to hear this all the way through. So we thank you for that. We hope you stay engaged. And the last thing I wanna remind you, as Steve says, even if you decide this one isn't for you, by all means, stay in touch with our office or reach out to us so that we can introduce you to other partners who can also potentially help you launch your idea right here in Broward County. So with that, thank you again and good night, everyone.